ancestors who fought for independence and ancestors who are long before the war. I love learning about them and sharing what I learned with you guys. We're too young to talk about forever, talk about the weather, to know any better. I just want to laugh until I can't breathe. Midnight moonlight dancing, never get enough sleep. today because we took colonial crafts on the road and today we are here at Riley's Farm in Oakland, California. But I can't go back in time looking like this. Much better. Come on, let's go. Hello, today we are doing candle dipping with my friend Kyle here. Hello there. And would you tell us some of the history of candle dipping? Absolutely. Well, here in Colonial America, candles are a very important part of our everyday life uh, because, well, we need to be able to see after the sun goes down. And most of us, our homes only have one hearth, one fireplace. So if we're going to go from our fireplace to our bed, we need to be able to see. Because if you trip and fall in the dark, uh, you might not only just knock over that uh, ancient vase that your grandparents brought over from Europe when they came here, but you might also break your leg and no one could even find you because you live 10 miles from the nearest town. So it's actually it can be a matter of life or death to be able to see. So uh, the typical New England family would require about 100 candles to last the entire year. Because uh, wow. we only burn them just right after we are going to bed. When we leave the fireplace, we'll light the candle to light the way to our room, change into our pajamas, and then blow it out. So we try and make them last as long as we can. Well, that's still a lot of candles, though. Indeed. Especially Indeed. if you're making this all day. Yes, so to make a candle, it can take anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes uh, to make a standard size candle. And uh, again, if we need 100 a year, we'd probably try and make them all at the same time once a year, which means that we could be here for quite some time, probably multiple days. Wow, wow, wow. So. Would you like to do it for that long? No. Mm, I mean, either. it's my favorite thing, but I don't know if I want to do it for three, four days. It gets rather tedious, actually. Well, uh, what are the things that we would need? Great question. So you will need a uh, iron cauldron like this, or some sort of a metal pot. Uh, you'll need a fire, or coals, or charcoal, or something like that. Uh, you'll need a pail full of water. You'll need mm -hmm. cotton, a uh, cotton wick. Uh, for the candle, uh, and then of course you'll need wax. And so uh, our wax is uh, mostly made from something called tallow, which is a rendered animal fat, usually from a sheep or a cow. Uh, and we also add in small amounts of beeswax and bayberry wax uh, to make it smell a little bit nicer. Uh, <laughs> however, you may have uh, access to helpful and very cheap modern waxes, such as paraffin. Well. Are we ready to make ours? I think so. So what we have right. here is uh, candle starch. So we've already uh, added just a small amount of wax uh, onto the wick to make it easier to get going. So I'm going to give you that. And the first thing that you're going to do is give that a very quick dip into our hot wax, making sure not to burn yourself. Very good. And now tap it three times against the side of the cauldron. That's so all the extra wax will go back into the cauldron and not onto the ground. As Mr. Franklin said, waste not, want not. Next, we're going to dip the candle, which is very hot, into the water for a bit longer, maybe about two or three seconds, and that's to cool it down. Because if the candle gets too hot, then every time you dip it back into the uh, wax, it's just going to melt and get smaller instead of getting larger and larger. And now that that's completed, you're going to go ahead and dip it again, and again, and again, and again. Now you said that if we were making how many it would take for? Approximately 100. 100. Mm -hmm. Now would they have to do it one by one or how would they do that? That is a very good question. Uh, if you were very desperately poor, you would probably need to do it one by one. Uh, but I have something in the uh, Chandler here that could actually assist us. Give me just one moment. Okay. Damn it. It's already starting to get a little bigger. <laughs> so this is called a candle tree. So I could take a bunch of candle starts like this, I could tie about five of them to each of these metal rungs, wow. and then if I had a very large cauldron like that one behind you, I could wow. simply dip 
40 or 50 at, the, at a time. Wow. Which would, of course, save us quite a lot of time. <laughs> so, whose job would it be to make the candles? Well, that's a good question. Uh, most, uh, or many families would make their own, uh, because candles could be quite expensive. Uh, however, it was a trade, uh, someone who professionally made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of candles, and that person would be called a chandler. And as you can see, we are actually standing in front of a chandler shop here, and through the window there you can see about a hundred candles are hanging up to uh, wait for someone to purchase them. And depending on the quality of the materials that the chandler used, the candles would range from rather expensive to extremely and possibly and extravagantly expensive. So how big would you want your candles to be? Well, that depends. That's sort of up to you. You could make them to be very giant, uh, very thick, uh, and those, of course, would last a long time, but they would also take a very large amount of wax. Uh, a standard size candle takes about 100 dips and is approximately one inch in diameter at the base. One inch. Mm -hmm. About this. And so that's, uh, that was, way. indeed, yes, you only have about, oh, 35 minutes to go. And the standard only size candle was considered to be a good balance between how long it took to make it and how cheap it was, as well as how long it would burn for. So if somebody were doing this in their family, who would be the person to do that? Well, oftentimes uh, the children would be made to do it because typically the parents had uh, other more important things to do. So oftentimes uh, early in the morning the father or the mother would rise up, build a fire, prepare the wax, get everything ready, and then they would set the children to dipping. And the children would dip all day while the father was working in the field or at his job and the mother was, you know, attending uh, to the household and sewing and making dinner and making sure that they had enough food to last the winter and that sort of thing. So, uh, yes, it would be you. Me? Indeed. Hmm. You said it was your favorite thing to do, right? Yes, but not, like, Not if you were made days. to do it. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> this does take a very long time. Indeed. Almost time for dinner. Oh, yes, indeed. Almost there. Almost there. Last dip. A hundred. Bravo. Now, uh, you know what it takes to uh, light a candle? Fire? Fire, indeed. Now, these candles, however, you will need uh, something else to light. And that is your parents' permission. <laughs> well, yes, that too. Yes, of course. And when you're done, uh, you can cut the wick off uh, closer to the candle. And there we have it. There's your candle. Thank you. You're most welcome. Well, that wraps up our candle dipping session. And I want to thank my friend Kyle here. And feel free to make this at home with a parent supervision or to make it a whole lot easier, you can come up here to Riley's Farm where we have excellent people to help. We'd love to have you. So, thank you. See you next time. Farewell.